What do you notice about this code behind me? Do you notice there's a Git conflict? Do Git conflicts scare you? Well, they shouldn't. It's going to happen as the project grows, as the team members increase, and as the project just evolves faster and faster, you will eventually get conflicts. We do try to mitigate conflicts by having small pull requests, little and often changes will reduce the conflicts. Working in different modules to other people in your team will also reduce this. However, as much as we try to reduce Git conflicts, it will happen. The best way to not be scared of Git conflicts is Let's create a few and let's resolve them together. For those of you who have not had a Git conflict before or are new to it, the way you notice a Git conflict is these less than symbols and then head, which is where you are in your branch. And then underneath that are your changes. Then it's broken with the equal symbols. And now it will show us the incoming changes. And then this line here are the changes that are coming in and it will say which branch is coming in from. So if you're doing a merge, say from develop into your feature branch, this will say develop underneath. I don't want you to be scared of these. And you might have multiple conflicts in my file and you may have multiple files with a conflict. I'm going to show you how you can resolve those in this video. If you're interested in getting involved in open source and upskilling your collaboration skills so you can get the projects, clients and job that you deserve, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel below and give the video a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions, any thoughts or any projects you want me to review and look at. As long as they're open source, I'm more than happy to take a look because I can learn from you as well. Today we're going to resolve these conflicts by following along on the GitHub Labs. GitHub Labs has so many ways you can learn, not just about GitHub, GitHub Actions, Markdown. GitHub Labs is a great way to not only learn about GitHub, but also to learn about other languages like Node, Express, Python. So do have a look. I'll leave a link below. But in today's video, we are going to be resolving merge conflicts. And I'm going to show you how you can walk through the lab and how it guides you through it and how it creates conflicts for you, how you will create conflicts. You know what? Let's just jump straight into it. This lab is from the official GitHub team, which means it's been really thought out and they've really thought about how to make it easier for you to follow along and to test your skills and push your skills a bit further. Just to recap, a Git conflict is when two people changes the same line of code. Git doesn't know which one it should pick and it needs human intervention to decide. And sometimes they both might need to be merged together manually by yourself. So in this lab, we're going to learn what is a merge conflict, what causes them, how do you resolve a merge conflict, and how can you reduce merge conflicts. So when you're done at the end of this video, you'll be able to understand how merge conflicts happen, what causes them, resolving simple and complex merge conflicts, and share best practices to reduce merge conflicts with your team. They estimate this to take about 34 minutes, but I think we can do it in about 10. What do you think? So here are the steps we're going to go through in this video. We're going to resolve a conflict. We're going to then merge our first resolve pull request. We're going to then resolve conflicts in a more complex pull request. And we're going to merge the pull request. And we're actually going to create a conflict. And then we're going to resolve the conflict that we created. And then we'll merge the final pull request. And so by the end of this video, you should no longer be scared of Git conflicts. To get started, you just hit start. I always suggest making it public. It's really important to show people what you've been working on and it adds those green squares to your GitHub account. Okay, so now it has been created. We can click on start. And there's two places you can click on start. You can do the top in the alert notification or you can hit the big green button. So straight away, it takes us to the project, the repository that it's created under our account. In this case called Merge Conflicts. And it's created four pull requests and dropped us into one of the pull requests. Let's have a look what the bot says. A merge conflict occurs when changes are made to the same part of the file on two different branches. Here's the marble diagram of the git commits. As I showed you before, this is what a conflict will look like. You will have two parts to it. You'll have your changes and the incoming changes. Let's jump in and resolve this conflict. So we're in a pull request. We cannot merge it. It's grayed out because there is a conflict. So and it tells us which files are in conflict. We can hit resolve conflict. Yes, you can do this on the command line, but we're gonna show you on the GitHub platform how this is possible and how GitHub makes this so much easier. So this is the config file and it's showing two conflicts. So this is our branch update config and these are our changes. And then underneath with the separator are the changes coming in from master. In this case, it's quite straightforward. We can pick one of them and move forward. We don't need to merge the two changes together as you would with some code scenarios. So in this case, I'm going to delete what's coming in because I want to keep our changes and I'm going to delete the opening one. 
And there we go, there you have it. It's now resolved. There's nothing else in this file that is in conflict. So we can hit marked as resolve. I'm happy with that. And then if there was another conflicting file, we could go resolve that first and we'll come to that shortly. So now we can go commit merge. And now that's done, our branch going from update config into master should be ready to merge in. Let's have a look. As you can see now, there's no more conflicts and it's ready to merge in. So let's hit merge. I'm happy with the description that it's been automatically been added. If you're working in a feature branch, a branch should be deleted afterwards as it's no longer needed. So now we can go to the next pull request. The bot has already given us instructions on what to do next. So you don't have to hunt around. It will actually handhold you and guide you through the changes. Now it wants us to resolve a more complex config. So in this one, we're going to have two files that need resolving. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the pull request, it says we've got two files that need resolving. We don't have to go find these files. GitHub's platform will automatically bring those to our attention. So let's click on resolve conflicts. And we're first of all, we're on the uh, experience.yaml file. And you can see it has multiple conflicts in this file. So in the first case, I think I wanna take the GitHub Inc our changes in our branch. So I'm just gonna delete those. And now we've got the changes for that particular conflict. And now if we go down to here, which one should we choose? So we choose the support OctoCat or the intern. Again, I'm gonna choose the support OctoCat. OCAT, support OCAT. Oh, that's terrible, I didn't say that correctly. Do that again. And now we come down to the next set of conflicts and we need to pick one, either our changes or the changes below. So I'm gonna pick our changes again. I've deleted that and the file looks good now. I can hit mark as resolved. There is no commit button just yet because we have another file to resolve. And GitHub's platform has already taken us to that file. We're on interest.yaml, it's automatically helped us. So down here, what changes do we want? So again, this file has got multiple conflicts. I wanna probably choose everything. This is where we're gonna merge both conflicts into a single file. Because I actually want all the changes. We're not deleting any code, if you notice. We're just actually deleting the conflict tags. We're keeping changes from both branches. Mark as resolved, and let's commit the merge. It will commit these two files together. So if we scroll down, you can see now it's put this commit in and it said merge branch master into add experience, which is the branch that we're working in. So if I scroll to the top of the pull request, you can see we're in the add experience branch. And we're requesting that our pull request gets merged into the master branch. So we scroll down, we can now merge it. Delete the branch. Awesome, we've now been successful. Let's go to the next pull request. Aha, the exciting part, create your own conflict. Some tips on what to do. We'll go to the education.yaml and let's make some changes. As you can see at the moment, this pull request and branch has no conflicts. If we go to the files changed, and these are the files that have been changed in this branch and pull request. There are no conflicts in this branch, file, and pull request, so let's make some. If we click on the three dots and we hit edit file, we can make some changes. So I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna make web developer into two words, capital D, and remove the nano degree at the end. I'm happy with those changes. Let's commit them to our branch. We've made that change. So now you can see on the right hand side on green, the changes that we have made. And on the left in red, you can see the changes what they were before. So if we go back to the first tab, the conversation, let's have a look at the bottom. Just like before, we need to resolve the conflict and we can choose which parts of the conflicts we wanna keep. Is it both? Is it some of them? Is it part of them? Is it none of them? So in this case, I'm actually gonna remove our changes and keep the changes coming in from the master branch. And I'm happy with that. So again, I'm gonna mark it as resolved. I'm gonna commit it. And if we scroll down to the bottom, now that we're done on this pull request, we can merge it in. Hopefully you can see resolving a conflict is not that scary. Let's delete the branch. And now the bot has given us a reply and it says there's a final issue. Let's go have a look and see what it says. Awesome, it's saying congratulations. So now you know how to resolve a simple conflict. You know how to resolve a complicated conflict where there are multiple conflicts in a single file and there are multiple files of conflicts. And it's not that scary. And if you need to reach out and pair with the other person that your conflicts are with, don't forget you can do that. You can go to git blame where you can see who changed those lines of code. And that way you can speak to them and say, well, I've got these changes and you've got these changes. Can we pair together and work together on resolving this conflict? So if you go back to the lab that we were doing and you can see that the progress is seven out of seven. So you can always come back to it. You don't have to complete it all in one go. And you can see the steps that we took and the things that we've done. And that's how straightforward it is to resolve a merge conflict. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll definitely reply and we can chat more about it. We also have a Discord channel where we can chat between live streams and between videos. We have a great community there who really want to help you get into open source and accelerate your career. Don't forget, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel below and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, that's exactly the same. It's really stupid, Eddie. But also learn how to... Uh, 
but also you can learn. Uh, start again. So this lab is if, um, this lab. Uh, yeah. How you uh, how do you resolve? Yeah. We're going to resolve. Com uh, we're going to resent. Blah, and it adds those green square uh, squares. It went well. We've 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 learned 